right. And welcome to the Business Shower Podcast, a podcast for business owners to shine. Today, I have David Dishman, right? I said it right? That, yes, right. ma'am. Awesome. So, David, tell us who you are and um, what your business does. Well, Kelly, thank you so much for inviting me to be on your show. I, re- I really, really appreciate that. Um, I-, I have been a consumer ex- uh, consumer credit expert for about 20 years, and I- I'm a- an old guy. I've been around the block. Uh, actually, uh, first started getting interested in finances, uh, actually, when I was uh, in the Army, which was a long time ago, um, and it was because I got in trouble for not being very very responsible with my money. Mm. Um, there were a lot of things that we just didn't learn in school and, and we still don't. Uh, you know, what we fail to teach people about personal finance, about credit, uh, it, it just boggles the mind. And, and so a lot of us learn by experimentation or by watching other people who may not have a clue what they're doing either. Mm-hmm. And uh, so yeah, about 20 years ago, um, I started out as a financial advisor Mm -hmm. and was very, very successful doing that. And a friend of mine started a credit repair business and he asked me to come to work for him, with him. Okay. And uh, so that's how I got started in credit repair. And I've been with Omega Credit Repair since 2004. I took over the business in 2016 because he went off to do some other things. Mm -hmm. Um, And at that point, we added Omega Money Coach which is designed to help people uh, learn how to be more intentional with their finances so that they can move from debt to financial freedom. Mm. So there's kind of the Reader's Digest version of what I've done with the last, I don't know, 40 years of my life. Awesome. So (laughs) tell me what part of your story. Now, I know you said um, you know, you were, you was in the army and, um, you weren't really good with managing money. So what part of that story, you know, made you say, you know what, I'm going to, you know, get into credit repair and then learn about money. And then I'm going to teach, um, others about credit repair and money and how important that is. So it actually wasn't even, you know, yeah, I I got in trouble in in the army. And I look at that as a point where I'm like, man, I I don't want to live like this. Mm. It wasn't until later after after I got married and uh, my wife and I had our first kid. And it's like, you know what? I don't want my kids growing up like this. And, uh, and we started, you know, trying different things to, uh, you know, budget our money or trying to be more responsible, trying to, um, you know, just, uh, build our credit so that, mm-hmm. that we were, there were other things, uh, options available to us. Mm-hmm. And, at the same time, that's when I started uh, working in financial services as an investment advisor. Um, and, and what I found is that a lot of the people that I worked with, mm-hmm. they could not care about me. Okay, mm-hmm. you know they could they could care less about me, uh, and and I was managing millions of dollars worth of investment dollars for them, and they did not care. Yeah. Yet, when I took the time to educate someone who maybe had a, you know, twenty thousand dollar four hundred one k from an old business that they needed to roll over, and teach them about the power of compound interest versus, uh, you know, a a, a uh, interest amortization schedule where you're being charged interest versus where you're earning interest and, and talking about those differences and the power of compound interest and, and what it can do to change the future for you and your family, mm-hmm. those people embraced it. And those people mm-hmm. wanted to learn more mm-hmm. because we just don't teach people. Yeah. And, and so that's what took me away from investments and really made me more interested in, in helping people uh, on the credit repair side. And, and it really, you know, when, you know, 
everyone does what they do for money. Mm-hmm. You, you got to do what you do to provide a paycheck. Exactly. And, but when you get that phone call from someone who's sitting on their back porch and crying because they were able to get into a home that they never believed that they would be able to buy on their own. That's, that's when things change for you. And you're like, okay, you know, it's not just about the money. It's about, am I, am I changing lives? Mm -hmm. Um, And, and, you know, over the years, I've been reminded countless times that I I, would have made a ton more money if I had stayed in the investment world. Mm-hmm. But what would my life have looked like? Okay. And, and, you know, look no further than the last couple of years. And this, you know, take this for what it's worth. You you and I don't really know each other, mm-hmm. but I, I, I'm going to throw it out there. You know, the disparity in our culture, in our society, mm-hmm. um, I believe that a lot of it is based on money. Mm-hmm. And the disparity of money mm-hmm. and the 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 education or really the lack thereof of education mm-hmm. around money, finances, credit. Mm-hmm. And and so I've really kind of made it my my personal mission over the four years, the last four years specifically, actually uh, five years now okay. uh, to to educate as many people as I possibly can and to uh, reach out to underserved communities to say, hey, look, you know, wh- whatever you didn't learn about money, I'm here to teach you, okay? And, and I, you know, that that's just been, um, you know, wherever you started, that doesn't have to define who you are and where you're going. Absolutely. Okay. And I love that. I love that. Um, Unfortunately, no, they do not teach money in school, which is, it's so sad because it's just like, you know, these kids grow up and if their parents are not savvy in how to handle money and how to handle credit, they grow up not knowing how to do this. And it's, it, it just, it just sucks all the way around. Then they're, they're, you know, growing up to learn the hard way and the hard way is, the hard way. Like nobody wants to learn that way. <laughs> oh yeah. But. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's, um, it's interesting to me that we, you know, we are so quick to jump on board with, you know, a, a lot of different trends that are out there, mm-hmm. you know, but I want the trend to be that I want my kids to be more successful than me. I I don't want to live in debt. You know, I do a lot of speaking. And one of the things that I tell people all the time is that good credit does not have to equal debt. Mm -hmm. Um, And yet at the same time, I watch a lot of people on social media teaching people habits with their credit Mm -hmm. that actually put them in more debt. And, And it frustrates me because it's like, no, that's... You know, it's okay to be debt free and mm-hmm. still have a good credit score. Yes. Okay. And I can teach you how to do that. Okay. So let me ask you this question, right? So, what do you enjoy most about being an entrepreneur, your own boss, and the money coach? Like, what do you enjoy most about that? So, what do I enjoy most of it, about that? Well, mm-hmm. first of all, you know, as an entrepreneur, you know, and, and you know this is as an entrepreneur. I mean, it, it takes a special mindset to uh, to work, you know, 60, 70, 80 hour, hours a week so that you don't have to work 40 hours a week for someone else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. yes. um, you know, as, as an entrepreneur, we're always, always working because our mind is, OK, what else can I what other content can I provide? What other service can I how can I? make sure that I'm doing the most I possibly can Mm -hmm. for my, uh, for my clients. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, and to have the freedom to, to make those changes, make the, you know, adapt to, uh, new situations. Uh, I don't have to ask someone if I want to give something away. I don't have to ask someone if I want to, uh, you know, raise the prices or discount the prices Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, I don't have to ask someone if I want to go on vacation. Yeah. The, the freedom to do what you want to do. That's it. That's mm-hmm. it. Um, 
now the you know you give up some level of security and that steady paycheck and the benefits and things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I wouldn't change it for anything um, because the things that I've been able to do over the last 17 years, um, you know, it it gives me a sense of, of, of pride and satisfaction to know how many people that I've helped get into a home. Um, as for the money coaching, the financial coaching, mm-hmm. um, I felt very, very strongly about that, uh, because, uh, again, you know, it's what I try to help people do is let's refocus on what's important to you, mm-hmm. gain control of your finances, and then create a plan to move forward. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's kind of a, a three-step process of our one-on-one working together is how do we refocus, gain control, create a plan. And it, it's important to know what's important to you. Why are you doing this? Why are you, what is it that, that gets you excited, gets you out of bed, gets you to mm. sacrifice and mm. to, to go fight for your family and for, you know, that, that paycheck or that, you know, your, your own business. You're wise. Uh, why, I call them why? your wise. <laughs> that, that's it. What, what mm-hmm. is your why? Mm-hmm. Once you've focused on that, now you can gain control of your finances mm-hmm. and it's easier to see, okay, if I make this decision, does this get me closer to my why or take me further away from my why? Mm, That's a good way to look at it. And I just want to let the listeners know, make sure you write that down. (laughs) Okay, go ahead. (laughs) Well, here's the thing is that, you know, my, my why, and it's something that, you know, my wife and I have had to discuss Mm -hmm. over the years is, is, you know, first and foremost, you know, we want our kids to be at, get out of college debt free. Mm. Yes. Okay. Um, we, we don't ever want our kids to have a car payment. Okay. Mm. Car, car made yes. payment is the biggest single detractor to wealth that there is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I want to be able to re- work remotely mm-hmm. eventually, maybe from Mexico or something like that ah, okay. uh, on, on the beach, hanging out helping my clients. That sounds beautiful. (laughs) And and so my wife are talking about, and we get to talk about what does that look like? Mm -hmm. How can we achieve those goals? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Without incurring debt. Yeah. See that, that, that credit, it's okay to leverage credit, Mm -hmm. but when you are tied to debt, Mm -hmm it makes it a whole lot more difficult to take advantage of all that life has to offer. Yes. Okay. Um, You know, the, 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 the Bibles, and I don't know if you're, you know, religious or, you know, spiritual or whatever, but the Bible says, you know, the, the borrower is slave to the lender. Yeah, Mm. absolutely. Okay. (laughs) It, it, that is a true statement, whether you are religious, spiritual or not, Mm-hmm. You cannot cannot argue that fact, okay? Absolutely. And, and so, if we can eliminate debt and create wealth, mm. and that's what we do through the financial coaching, is we figure out what's our why, mm-hmm. what are we willing to sacrifice for, mm-hmm. and how are we going to get there. Okay. So, so when I go and and I'm I'm a car guy from way back. Okay. You'll never see me buy a new car. Okay. If I if I buy a car, it's because I've let someone else take the depreciation on it. Mm, okay. okay. I am never going to have a car payment. I did that once about 25 years ago, mm-hmm. and I felt sick to my stomach, mm. like immediately when I drove it off the lot, mm-hmm. and I swore that I would never do that again. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I have to agree with you with the car payments. Um I do have one now, um, but, you know, well, I put down a, a healthy, 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 uh, I'm going to say deposit. So I will be done with my car payment soon, but I agree with, with not having a car payment but be, because before this car, I didn't have a car payment, but yeah. So I, I definitely agree with that. And I had someone close to me tell me that 
like explained to me, he was in sales, he was in car sales and he broke down why I should never buy a new car. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I'm just like, okay, I get mm-hmm. it. <laughs> and so now the next mm-hmm. time you're going to look at that car payment and you're going to say, okay, mm-hmm. does this get me closer to my why mm-hmm. or does it take me further away? Exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't know how much your car payment is, but I'll tell you that the average car payment now is a little over $500 a month. Mm-hmm. And the average length of time is about seven years. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you were to take that $500 a month and invest it, okay, for seven years, now you're looking at a minimum five hundred dollars a month times twelve months is six grand a year for seven years is forty two thousand mm-hmm. dollars plus compound interest. Mm-hmm. Okay, whereas if you're paying that much on that vehicle, mm-hmm. that's and ridiculous. You buy it for X amount. What's it going to be worth at the end of seven years? Exactly. What could you possibly sell it for? Eight ten Nothing. grand. I was just about to say around that around that amount. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. Uh, yet you've invested, you know, forty-two grand in something that's only worth now. Now it, it, it's the difference between an appreciating asset and a depreciating asset. Mm-hmm. If you can use it, I've seen a lot of people use it as a, a on Turo as mm-hmm. a okay. I'm going to buy this car. I'm going to rent it out. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. As long as you can keep it booked mm-hmm. and and it's actually cash flowing for you. And it, it makes, makes sense. sense. Exactly. Okay. As part of a business model, mm-hmm. I, I can't, I, I can't hate on you for that. Yeah. But for most people buying something, I, I just bought because, well, I, I'm, you know, old and I'm hitting my midlife crisis. Well, don't say I that. I bought a 2003 <laughs> 350Z. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Cool little sports car okay. with a six-speed transmission. So I'm <laughs> shifting gears all over the place. <laughs> okay. I paid cash for it. Yeah. Okay. That is the best way to do it, honestly. But go ahead. Well, I'm sorry. And well, it's a 2003, so it's not brand new. Exactly. But it looks great. Mm-hmm. It's still people look at it and they're like, wow, that's kind of cool. But I am so glad you broke it down the way you broke it down with the $500 car payment and just kind of doing the math because now people could see like, you know, they may be paying a car note right now and it doesn't make sense that they're paying that much for a car. So I 100% get it. Like you like you said, the Toro, yes, I understand that because I do rent my car because I don't I, I don't go into work anymore. I work from home. So I rent my car out through Toro. So it's making me money right now. So that is one of the main reasons why I was just like, oh, I'll be done paying for this really soon. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it's it's that mindset, that whole mindset of this is what you're doing. Like, this is what we need to do to get to this. I, I love that whole structure you have there. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, and that, that's what you need is you need to discover your why. Mm-hmm. You need to gain control. And then mm-hmm. every decision you make, you know, is, is this, you know, Louis Vuitton handbag going to get me closer to my goals or take me further away? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Is this car payment going to get me closer to my goals or take me further away? Exactly. Okay. And it's truly not what other people think about you, but how you can look at yourself in the mirror. Thank you. Say that again. (laughs) (laughs) It's not what other people think about you. It's how you can look at yourself in the mirror. Exactly. And I love it. So, okay. I have to ask you this question. Um, The pandemic happened last year. We're still going through the pandemic. how did that change your business? Did it change your business for the good or did it change your business for the bad? <clears throat> you know, uh, change is neither good nor bad. It's just mm-hmm. change. Mm-hmm. And we had to adapt. We had to adjust. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I didn't, uh, you know, there are, there are still uh, a ton of people who need help. Mm-hmm. And with 
the cutback in hours with layoffs with you know you you know, we're we're closing up the restaurants with you know there there are a ton of people who need uh credit help there's a ton of people who need financial help mm-hmm. um during covid uh at the very beginning uh some of our active clients we actually continued to work on them at no charge because we knew that they needed our help and it wasn't their fault that their company got, you know, shut down mm-hmm. and they, they couldn't work. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, now coming out of COVID, a lot of people had a lot of free time on their hands mm-hmm. and a lot of people decided, Hey, you know what? I can be a credit specialist. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people started their own credit repair business. Now, awesome. Did that- yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes uh-oh, and no. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. Yes and no. Okay. Some of them. I look. You know. Um. I've been a referral only company since two thousand four. Okay. Okay. When we opened the doors, we have been referral only. We have not paid for leads, advertising, anything That's like that. Nice. We get business because mortgage officers, car dealers say, "Hey, you uh, know what? Your credit's screwed up. I need you to go talk to David. He's the one that can help you." Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So these yeah. are not people who started under your company. These are just people who started in the random people who said, okay. you know what, I'm going to be a credit specialist. And they went out and made business cards and, uh, and, and started doing credit, which mm-hmm. there's, there's a lot of good companies out there. I'm not mm-hmm. going to, you know, I would never sit here and uh, disparage another company, mm-hmm. but if you're going to get into the business, please do the research, know the rules, mm-hmm. understand what the laws are, not just federally, but in your state, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Manage expectations. Mm-hmm. You know, if you go and, and tell someone, hey, I can wipe every derogatory item off your, uh, off your credit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, run. <laughs> Okay. Do not. I mean, you know, the the person is is either they're either lying to you, Mm -hmm. or what they're about to do is illegal, and you're going to end up in trouble. Mm. Okay. Okay. You know, and uh, because what they're what some of these people will do is file a false report Mm -hmm. with the bureaus, which is illegal. Mm. There are companies out there who will charge a ton of money up front Mm -hmm. and then people can't get them on the phone again. Okay. Well, it's actually illegal to charge in advance for credit repair. Okay. Mm. I don't care if you call it a setup fee, an audit fee, a, you know, first work fee, whatever. If you charge anything before you actually do work on the client file, that is against federal law. Oh, wow. Okay. So, Uh, again, I don't <clears throat> mind that there are new people mm-hmm. coming into the industry. Mm-hmm. Just learn the industry. Yeah. Learn yeah. what's legal, what isn't, and, mm-hmm. and understand that that these people need help. And if you're just looking at the dollars, mm-hmm. I'm looking at you as taking advantage of people who are already in a bad situation, situation. because yeah. desperate people will do desperate things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That is true. I mean, I was a credit I off my soapbox. Yes, <laughs> I was a credit uh, repair specialist for like a hot second, but I was just like, I don't have time for this. I have my real estate business. I have this. I have that. So I just left it alone. I was just like, yeah, I, I can't do this. I don't have the time to do this. Um, but back to our interview, I wanted to say. So we all know that being an entrepreneur is a tough road. You've been in business since 2014. I mean, excuse me, 2004, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So first, I just want to congratulate you on that because that is remarkable for you to still be in Ooh. business. Like you're still going. So I love that part. Um, but in those difficult moments where the leads weren't coming in and you know you were not afraid, but a little worried about how you were going to, you know, get these leads to start flowing again, right? How did you stay motivated and continue to make progress? So I have, uh, uh, I have uh, several employees, okay? Oh, okay. And 
Um, my employees have been with me. One of them's been with me for almost 15 years. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, the other two have been with me for over 10 years. Mm. And then I've got a fourth person who I just started working with. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, I do all of the sales. So mm-hmm. if we don't have enough business coming in, it falls on me. Okay. Right. These okay. people do all of the, the, the processing, the uh, dealing with the bureaus, with the individual debt collectors, with, uh, you know, customer service, uh, making sure that our clients uh, know what's going on and have a, a to-do list of things that they can be doing, tips, mm-hmm. tools, techniques, things that they can do on the positive side to help improve your, their scores. Mm-hmm. And what I look at is that I'm the last one to get paid. Mm. Okay. So that's a pretty strong motivator mm-hmm. um, because I'm never going to take a paycheck and not pay my employees. Mm. Okay. That is the I, second I, time I heard that. And I love that, but go ahead. <laughs> no, it, I mean, that's just, uh, that, that's just the bottom line. And, and, you know, you, if, if you are going to be an entrepreneur, you know, there's going to be peaks and valleys. You got to plan for it. You got to be mm-hmm. ready for it. And mm-hmm. if you, if you are, um, if you feel like you can, bring someone else on, Mm -hmm. you have to understand that that person is reliant on you Mm -hmm. and you have a duty to take care of that employee Mm -hmm. before you eat. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of people understand that about entrepreneurship. Like they have to get paid. Your employees have to get paid regardless because they are the ones who run your business. So even if you don't get paid, they still have to get paid. I said, yeah, I said that's the second time I heard that because um, another business owner of mine that I know, she runs a staffing agency. And she said that before. She said there has been times where she hasn't gotten paid, but she made sure her employees got paid. And I was just like, that is great. Um, okay. So we do have a couple more questions left. So this is like a double whammy question that I ask all of my guests that come on my show. Um, so what's the most important thing you learned in life? What was your life like before you learned it? And what was your life like after you learned it? That is a really interesting question. Uh, because, there have been, you know, so many uh, good lessons that I've had, um, you know, uh, about leadership, about, you know, um, uh, about uh, faith and helping others and doing, you know, doing to others like you want done to you and, and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But from a business perspective, Mm-hmm. Um, there, I, I would say that there is a, an individual, he's now deceased by the name of Zig Ziglar. And he mm-hmm. used to say all the time, you can get everything in life that you want. If you just help enough other people get what they want. Okay. I feel like I heard and, that quote before. <laughs> that, that quote comes from Zig Ziglar and, mm-hmm. and, um, he, if you listen to him, or read his book, Mm -hmm. he follows that up with, you have to truly believe this. It can't be a gimmick. It can't be a, you know, a a strategy. Yeah. Okay. And what happens when you give and help people to, to grow and to change and to succeed? Mm -hmm it all comes back to you. Yeah. Okay. The law of, what is it? The law of attraction? The law of attraction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And, and and so that is probably one of the the greatest um, lessons that I've learned. Mm -hmm. Um, And and it helps me to stay motivated to, you know, regardless if, if someone can give to me, I want to give to them. Okay. I, I, I try you know, to, to support, to engage, to raise up and, you know, there you go. 
All right. So I just have a couple more questions for you. So my first question is, what tips can you give, um, you know, a new business owner who may have, you know, some bad credit and, you know, they want to know how to go about fixing their credit? Because like you said, there's so many people out here that say that they're credit repair specialist. So what can you tell them um, how to weigh out who's good and who's bad and who could truly help them and, you know, assist them in fixing their credit? Sure. Call me. I'm, I'm, <laughs> that, that's the easy answer. You, 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 you call them mega credit repair and we'll be able to take care of you. But from a, from a serious standpoint, and, and I mentioned this earlier, there are good companies out there. Mm -hmm. If they promise to wipe everything off your credit, run away. Mm -hmm. If they charge you an upfront fee, run away. Mm -hmm. um, if, if they don't uh, have a, a dedicated phone line, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're calling their cell phone, you know, look, you know, uh, people have to start somewhere, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I want to know that I can get someone on the phone at some point. And that's the biggest complaint that I hear mm -hmm. is that, well, I paid this person all this money and then I couldn't get them on the phone again. Okay. <laughs> and, and so I don't want you to go through that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, a lot of what I see on social media and actually a few of the groups that I'm in right now mm -hmm. uh, are geared towards helping people uh, build business credit. Mm -hmm. okay? Yes. The first thing I want to say about that is business credit is not a replacement for your own personal credit. Okay? okay. You can't just jack up your, your personal credit and not pay anybody mm -hmm. and say, well, that's okay. I'm just going to go get some business credit over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're going to be responsible, if you're going to, you know, and, and if you look at it, the scoring models are there to tell lenders who you are as a person and who you are as a credit risk, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So think about that when you're looking in the mirror and say, okay, is my credit score an accurate representation of who I am as a person, Preach. okay? And if it's not, why? And, and what can we do to change that? And I am not here to judge. Life happens to people. It it's does. It's what you do to get past it Mm -hmm. that matters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, and there are, there are certain things. I mean, I, we could go into a whole long diatribe about, uh, well, do I pay this collection? Do I pay the original creditor? How do I do this? How do mm -hmm. I deal with mm -hmm. medical debt or a judgment or a bankruptcy? Mm -hmm. And, and there's a lot of different, uh, ins and outs on that, that mm -hmm. I'm happy to have that discussion at a, I mean, cause that could be, uh, you know, an hour long discussion right there. And I don't want to mm -hmm. sideline us, but you got to make sure that the person that you're working with understands the nuances of, yeah, before you pay a third party debt collector, find out what the statute of limitations is in your state. Mm -hmm. Find out what the obsolescence period is on that item. Find out what the date of first delinquency is. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's these things that you, and if they don't know, Mm -hmm. you need to find someone else and you need to just call Omega because yeah. we're going to take care of you. Now, okay. going back to the business credit piece, mm -hmm. when you have your personal credit squared away, you need, and if you're thinking about starting your own business, mm -hmm. there are specific steps that you need to take to build that business credit. Mm -hmm. And you got to do it right. And you got to do it right from the beginning. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it makes it more difficult because if the address you use when you get your LLC or when you get your EIN, if that doesn't match the address that you use when you file for your DUNS number or when you uh, apply for, um, you know, a, a uh, line, line of, credit, of credit, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. If those addresses don't match up, you're not going to get approved. Yes. Okay. So there, there is strategy that needs to be in place. Um, you know, one of the the uh, things that I take issue with in some of these uh, uh, 
Facebook groups Mm -hmm. is people who are saying, well, you know, to build the credit faster, go to this website, they'll give you a line of credit, then you can buy some uh, gift cards, and then you can take those gift cards mm-hmm. and cash them in for cash, and then you can report that as income and pay off your debt. No, mm-hmm. no, you, you're you're ma- you're making too much work for yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay? I'm so glad you touched a business credit conversation because you know personal credit is important. However, most of our listeners are business owners, and that is like the top. That is like the top thing I see because I'm also in those Facebook groups as well. So I see so many questions about business credit and I'm like, is that true? Is this true? Is that true? So I was one of, yeah, I was one of those business owners that learned the hard way because my registered address was not the same as what I applied for my DUS number. So I had to go back and redo everything, but it's all fixed now. (laughs) And, yeah. and what a pain in the butt it was. If, it, you, had, if you had only known and, and been able to do it right the first time, you know, life would have been so much easier because it mm-hmm. is possible to purchase vehicles and purchase property mm-hmm. using your, only your EIN without your own personal guarantee. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if you talk to your, whoever your tax advisor is, if you talk to your attorney, they're going to tell you, we want a delineation. Your personal has to be separate than your business Mm -hmm. and never the two should meet. Yes. Okay. I got in trouble for that. (laughs) And the minute you you personally guarantee on a credit card, Mm -hmm. you've lost that protection of the LLC. Exactly. Take it from me. I learned the hard way, guys. But yes, I'm so glad you touched that conversation. So um, as we wrap up uh, from the the podcast, is there anything else you want to tell our listeners about personal business, money, anything like that? Yeah, the number one thing that I that anytime I speak, I, I want to drive it home more than anything else is that good credit does not have to equal debt. Okay, and if you have questions on that, we need to talk Um, because when 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 you get locked up with all of these debt payments, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, you just, it, it causes you to miss out on so much of life. Mm -hmm. And so it's okay to have a good credit score Mm -hmm. and not have any debt. And, and that's, uh, I, I can help you learn how to do that so that you can eliminate debt and create wealth and change the trajectory of you and your family. Awesome. So let our listeners know where they can connect with you online, put all your handles down and guys, I'm going to put it in the show notes as well. So easiest way to get me is at david at omegacreditrepair.com or david at omegamoneycoach.com. Um, on uh, Facebook, I've got a page, David Dishman. I've got Omega Credit Repair. I've got Omega Money Coach. Uh, and then um, I do have an Instagram. I'm not on there much, but it's uh, uh, da- uh, the uh, uh, Omega Money Coach is the Instagram. Uh, I am also on TikTok. Oh. At the David Dishman. Okay. Okay. The David awesome. Dishman. And on TikTok, I do talk, uh, all I talk about is credit and personal finances. Okay. How to get ready for a home loan, how to build. In fact, I have a, a series of, uh, of TikToks on how to build business credit. Okay. Ooh, okay. So, uh, and you can, uh, you can hook up with me there. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show today. And thank you for dropping your knowledge here. And everybody, um, until next time, peace.